Hello. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of African American Voices of Charles County. I'm your host, Joe Sampson Jr., and my guest today is Mrs. Dor Dorothea Smith. Mrs. Smith is a longtime resident of the county and a lifelong educator who taught generations of county residents while shaping the educational journey of many others. In today's conversation, we will discuss Mrs. Mrs. Smith's journey through education, her many achievements, including a national level for work with this very College of Southern Maryland, and finally her social justice work, her social justice work and role as the president of the African American Heritage Society. I'm really excited to talk with Mrs. Smith, so let's get right to it. How are you this morning, ma'am? I'm fine. I'm fine. Wonderful. So I will be completely honest. Okay, be so. <laughs> I would, our interactions were very limited. Right. I would see you at our NAACP meetings mm -hmm. um, right. and um, a lot of the individuals would converse with you. Right. Um, you, knew, you knew a lot of them. Mm -hmm. uh, when we were looking for guests in, for this show, mm -hmm. Mike being our camera guy and, and, and a person who's helping me with, with securing talent, we'll say, okay. uh, said that I should definitely speak with you. Now, he gave me your name and your phone number, mm -hmm. but I didn't put a face with the name. Okay. And so I knew I needed to talk to the African American Heritage Society. Mm -hmm. So I went to the website and I emailed the person on the website. Of course you did. I called you later that evening, right. not realizing it was the same person. Oh, okay. And so um, in doing research for this, this conversation, mm -hmm. I was, um, I don't even know if pleasantly surprised is the right word for what I found when I found you <laughs> online. Tell me what you, what you mean. What do you mean? What do I mean? Yeah. Well, we're going to get into a lot of <laughs> I'm that. asking you a question. <laughs> we're going to get into a lot of what I found because what I found was some, was a, and I, and, I, and I keep using the word footprint because I think it's important to note, especially as I say in every one of these, um, these episodes, mm -hmm. as a transplant to the area, what was done here mm -hmm. um, and how that reverberated throughout the nation, mm -hmm. the state, and the local area. Right. Well, don't feel badly because I'm a transplant also. You didn't know that, did you? My first question. Okay. <laughs> where were you born and raised? Well, I was born in a, a place called Lothian, Maryland. It's in Anne Arundel County. Okay. Uh, and I'll tell you when I was born, 1942. I was born there. And uh, my parents, my father, uh, Went later on into World War II in the service. My mother worked in uh, Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and I was put with my grandmother. Uh, um, I think I was probably about five, yeah, it was 1947, so I stayed with my grandmother. And uh, it's interesting because I think back on it now, my grandmother boarded teachers, but I didn't think about that. Wow. And uh, one teacher's name was Mrs. Miss Miles, mm -hmm. and at the age of five, she asked me, did I want to go to school? And I said, surely, because I wasn't doing anything around the house. And uh, so I entered first grade at the age of five. But you know how you, you I just never thought about that. And maybe that was the beginning mm -hmm. of my wanting to maybe teach school, maybe. I don't know. But uh, anyway, my grandmother was a very uh, strong influence in my life. Absolutely. Yep. Was your grandmother here in Charles County? or No, it's Anne Arundel. Anne Arundel, Remember, okay. Lo well, they called it Drury, Maryland at the time. Okay. But now it's officially called Lothian, but she lived about a mile from where my mother eventually built a home because my mother built a home while my dad was in World War II. Wow. Oh, now. wow. Yeah, because when he came home, he went past the house that my mother had built, went to my grandmother's, and my grandmother said, where are you going? She said, because you have a home down, back down the road. My mother had built this home while he was in World War II. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit of background. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so you were, now, did you matriculate through uh, elementary, middle, yes, high school, I went all to, there? Yeah, I went to elementary school, which was about a half of a mile from my grandmother's where we walked to school. Mm -hmm. And then I went to uh, 
but I was grades one through six, and then I traveled 23 miles by bus to Annapolis, Maryland. I went to the, the great Wally H. Bates High School. Wally and I graduated, H. Bates. Yes, the great Wally H. Bates High School in Annapolis, Maryland. Wow. That I'm proud to say is still there, but it's now, uh, they call it the Wally H. Bates Heritage Park. What was, what was so significant about that school? Well, uh, the thing I remember the best is that they taught us to be better than the best. We, they never said who was the best. So we just said, mm, better than the best. And, and our teachers were, they were great. And they took care of us, they taught us well. Discipline was the key in the school. Mm -hmm. And I say that because I think maybe that's what I learned from uh, Bates' discipline, because that's what was the number one thing in, when I taught school. But uh, it was just a caring community, and plus I was coming from the countryside mm -hmm. into the city side, and that was great too. But it, we had 2,000 kids in our high school, wow. 7 through 12, but it was a great thing. And you got to remember, we were in Annapolis with the Naval Academy and things of that nature, so we got to, to learn a lot of things. But anyway, I, I had a beautiful, beautiful uh, high school education. You're, you said your school was from 7th grade through 12th? To 12th, 12th grade, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm, yeah. Wow. Because I was going to say back in the day, we only had uh, 1 through 6. And then, of course, mm -hmm. we, we call it junior high and high school, but it was seven through twelve. It was all the same. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you were you were there, um, traveling to and from. Mm -hmm. um, you said Drury. It was called Drury. It was called Drury. D R U R Y. Okay. Right. And then uh, later on, of course, it, it, uh, Lothian Encompass, Encompass where I was, because my home is closer to the Upper Marlboro. Mm -hmm. uh, Prince George County line. Gotcha. We, we lived in, I guess, southern Anne Arundel County. Gotcha. Gotcha. But gotcha. now it's called Lothian. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. And and while your dad was in, in World, World War, II, War II. My mom which, was in Washington, D.C. working. And she was in, she stayed with Grandma. And I stayed with Grandma, and I, I asked her many times, I said, how did you build this home? She said, well, we got two allotments, one for you and one for me from the service. From the service. She said, I took one allotment and took care of you. And I, the other lot went and bought a half an acre of land from my uncle and my uh, her brothers and whatnot helped build the house. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it's still there. My brother lives in it today. To this day? Same house? Same house. That was built by, by your uncles? That's correct. Wow. Supervised by my mother. <laughs> that, that's the key. Supervised that's, that's, by that's, your mother. That's right. That's, that's correct. <laughs> so do you, what was your you said something really interesting about the thing they instilled in you in high school, mm -hmm. um, and and I I want to I want to point to that because there's no doubt about it that it shows up mm -hmm. throughout the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, in terms of not knowing who the best was. No, ne ne never did. Never putting a face to the best. Never did. Mm -mm. Why do you think they did that? Well, no. In those days, there was no problem with discipline. You went to school to learn, because that was the number one thing, education. That was preached at home also. And 23 miles, you were not going to do anything wrong. <laughs> right. no, no one was coming to school. We didn't yeah. have a car or anything of that nature. And I just think by saying, be, I want you to be better than the best, that's a goal. Yeah. We, and we, like I said, we didn't know who was the best. And, and sometimes I guess we probably thought a little bit. Mm -hmm. But we didn't think about the outside world, because it was segregation. Mm -hmm. But we just felt that it was the best thing going. I mean, we had... We had, uh, when, I, when I tell, uh, when I used to tell some of my young people in class what our school did for us, they couldn't believe it because I can remember seeing the Harlem, the original Harlem Globetrotters at our school for a quarter. But the teachers were allowed to let you go. If you didn't do your work, you didn't go. And I, I remember Mahalia Jackson appeared at our school one night. And I, I remember that because she was singing and we had a storm and the lightning hit the microphone the phone, and she never stopped singing. So we had things like that at my school. Okay. So at your high school, yes, the Mahalia Jackson, you got it, is singing. Yes, right. And lightning hits the that microphone. microphone, right? And she kept right on singing. And she keeps right on singing. singing. But but those were opportunities. I mean, at the time we didn't think too much about it until we got out in the world and started knowing who really these people really were. Absolutely. But our, our teachers were preparing us to know people from our background. Right. But yeah, the original Harlem Grove Charters for a quarter. I got to go because I did my work. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm sure that wasn't the issue. Wow. And 23 miles. Mm -hmm. 
So you traveled the 23 miles. It was you. You said you had a brother. Did you have any other siblings? Or yeah, was there were five of us. Five of them. One, okay. my, my, one of my sisters passed in 2003, but we had uh, I have an older brother. And then I, 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 well, I'm the oldest. I have a brother next to me. Then I had two sisters and a younger brother. So there wow. were five of us. And everyone made that trek. At different stages. Well, yeah, not quite because, see, I went to Wally H. Bates. My sister Susan went to Wally H. Bates, uh, Carolyn Wally H. Bates. But then my brother Calvin, he went to Southern High School because then it was integration. Then. Integration yeah, yeah, came about. They're younger, so they, yeah, okay. but the three girls. Three girls. To, and I think uh, Susan and Carolyn, they, that was their last class. Class, I think, of six to eight. Okay. Their last class. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So... If you can pinpoint your um, your earliest memory of a of a teacher who and I, and I'm asking that because when we when we go into when we continue to talk later on mm -hmm. I wanna I wanna be able to pull from this moment if you can pinpoint a teacher in that time frame um, that had the most profound effect um, on you. Who who would could you point to one? I can point to two. You can point to two. As I think, but elementary school, mm -hmm. and, and, and I and I'm going to say this, Miss Thomas, and the thing about Miss Thomas was, her sister married my great uncle. But see, I never knew that, that they would say that, and she was rather strict. Yeah. Because I think she's the only one who tapped me with a ruler, because I I could not recite a poem. And back in the day, you had a poem for September, October, November, and all. And you had to know all the capitals and all the states and whatnot. And she tapped me on my finger uh, about something that I didn't know. But she taught all six grades. So Miss Thomas, and I'm saying this because I said she was a relative in-law, mm -hmm. but I never knew that. And then in high school, uh, there were many. But you know what? I'm going to say the 11th grade teacher, Miss Pace. Whom we really didn't like that much. She was more of a military person, mm -hmm. and and we used to laugh because she married the chemist teacher. <laughs> right. uh, uh, but Mrs. Pace taught me grammar in eleventh grade, and I, I, you know, never thought too much about it. And to get an A, you had to have a perfect paper. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first A I got, but I got all twenty-seven correct. Oh, right. But I say that because when I went to Bowie, I went to Bowie State College. We had a chance to come back to see our teachers. And I came back to see Ms. Pace, a teacher I didn't like at the didn't time, like because she taught me how not to cheat, how to get an A, and, and a love of grammar, because I, 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 I love grammar. So I, I have to say that my high school teacher taught me what I know when I got here to teach. Wow. I have to say that. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. OK, so we're going to take a quick break. OK. Um, and then when we come back, we will. Uh, Move to the second stage because okay. you, you got a little ahead of me with uh, oh, Bowie State, but we're on our way to it right now. <laughs> yeah, well, I, have to, I have to say, when, when it comes to this mind, the, the senior moment will come up. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so we'll be right back. Okay. Dad? Just one minute, okay? Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Okay. Why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back. Mm -hmm. um, we just learned about, and during the break, you gave me one little piece of information that I thought was incredible, that going to the you know, infamous Wally H. Bates, that it was named after yeah. the black man who put up the $500 That's for the school in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, you, you talked about Miss um, Pace and Miss mm -hmm. Thomas and what they, what they meant to your, to your life and right. to your educational career. Mm -hmm. um, so you're done at Wally H. Bates. Right. At that point, did you know you wanted to be an educator? No, not really. 
I, I tell you the truth, I wanted to be a nurse. You wanted to be a nurse. I wanted to be a nurse because I saw on television uh, Diane Carroll, mm -hmm. and you know she looked good in that little white uniform. <laughs> right. And I thought that well, I married a doctor. He's, he makes he, he will make plenty of money. Right. And I will live happily ever after. Absolutely. But what happened? Uh, I had a cousin, uh, Beverly, and we went to Prince George's Community Hospital, and they brought a man in there with his head split open, and I said, Oh no. It's not for me. <laughs> not and she for stayed me. there. And I said, I have to go. Uh -huh. So I said, well, knock that out. And so then the next thing, because, you know, we weren't afforded too much to dream about nurse, maybe doc, uh, maybe a teacher, mm -hmm. maybe a minister. So I said, oh, I guess the teaching would be the next thing. Teaching so that's thing. what happened. That's how I got into becoming a teacher. I said, that's the next thing. And how did you, how did you end up at Bowie State? Well, that was the closest, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, some of my other relatives, cousins, had gone to Bowie. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that was just the regular thing to do. Yeah. So in 19, uh, well, let me back up a little bit, because I'm going to tell you a little something how I got here, the beginnings here. Because at 17, I graduated from high school. And what happened, I had an aunt who married uh, this young man, and he, they came to Brandywine, Maryland to live. Okay. And uh, my aunt had a set of twins, Ruth and Ruby. And uh, that summer, in 1959, they came uh, home and they said, uh, why don't you come down to Brandywine, because there's a guy who lives next door, two doors down, who plays music. Okay. And I love to dance, but I thought boys were silly. But anyway, <laughs> I said, okay. So I came to Brandywine, Maryland, and I stayed in, believe it or not, my husband and I are married to today, he and his mother, he'd lost his father at the age of 17. He went to Pamunkey High School, and he and his mother had moved from Waldorf to Brandywine. And a uh, uh, young man by the name of Mr. Hawkins uh, boarded with them, and he worked at Pat and Phoebe's on O. Washington Road, because then you had your black, uh, right. black bars. And, whatnot. and he said, would you like a job? I said, yes. He said, I said, I'm going to college. And he took me down to Pat and Phoebe's, Mr. Pat Penny. And Mr. Pat Penny hired me, which he shouldn't have, because I was 17. Because you were 17. Right. right. But he did. And... Uh, that's how I kind of like got a taste of Charles County. But when uh, my husband George asked me, to, did I want to go to the dancer? I said, sure, but that's all it was. Just a ride to the dancers. Just a ride and to the dancers. And when I, le when I my left, man George. that's right. <laughs> and that was in 59. And then I left and went to Bowie. And what got me back down to Charles County was they had these bond dancers and a plater. And I remember one night, the girls, we dressed up in, I'll never forget, black slacks and white blouses. And we came to the bond dance. Mm -hmm. And uh, he played in a band called the Rhythm Makers. And they were playing. And they came over and said, girls, could we come to Bowie? We said, if you have a car. Right. And that's how it started. And that's how it started. Yeah, so that, that was my introduction to Charles County. So you, you were in school at Bowie, mm -hmm. came all the way down to La Plata for a barn dance. Yes, because you got to remember, Anne Arundel didn't have you know, much. Right. He had to go to Annapolis. So we were on the southern part, and mm -hmm. Bowie, Bowie was in Prince George. Right, absolutely. So, but we learned about that, and we had, you know, young ladies. My roommate at the time, I was a freshman. They didn't have room in the dorm for me, so they put me in with sophomores. That's uh -huh. a, that's another good story too. But and and so my roommate was from Charles County. Got so, it. So you were coming down. That's right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. So you're at Bowie State. Mm -hmm. You decide I don't have but so many options. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be an educator. That's right. Um, and so. You did, you did, it, while at Bowie, you spoke mm -hmm. about going back to see Miss Tom, uh, Thomas, right? No, no Miss Pace. Miss Pace. Miss Pace. At, at Wally Bay High School. Right. Yeah, I went um, to see her. And, and this was while you were still studying. That's right. Um, and I was a freshman then. You were a freshman. Mm -hmm. And part of the curriculum was for you to go back. Well, they said you could. And so I wanted to go back to Miss Pace and tell her how much I didn't, couldn't stand her class. Yeah. But she made a big in impact on me. On you. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so you matriculate through Bowie State. Right. Um, and you, you graduate with your bachelor's. Mm -hmm. Do you immediately go into your master's? Because oh. I saw you finished. No, no, no. While I was in, while I was in um, uh, uh, school, I got married. I married this young man okay. from Charles County. My man, George. Yeah, George. <laughs> Since he had that 55 uh, Pontiac, you know how that was. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he plays playing music. He got yeah, a 55 and, Pontiac. And, and one night. And he's taking a ride right? from La Plata to the Bowie. The That's man, he, well, he, he deserved in, a shot. Yeah, well, he lived in Brandywine then, but he came to, up to Bowie one time when it snowed. No other car got past, but 
but my man came there, so you know. My man George. They took another. So we got, I got married in, in college, and uh, and then I what, what was, and then we came and we lived with this mother in Brandywine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, had a family and whatnot, and then I gra I graduated from Bowie. And in the meantime, which was interesting, like I told you, I was a freshman and I was put in with sophomores. Mm -hmm. I met people from Prince George's. Mm -hmm. Because believe it or not, a delicate Susie Proctor, who I call Susie Proctor, was one of the sophomores. Wow. In the dorm. And, yes. And, and my roommate was from Charles Caring and whatnot. So I got to mix with Charles, Prince George's. All of that. Yeah. Right. This Anna Wendell County girl got to mix, mix with all of them. Mix, yes. mix it up with them. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, what, was your, what was your first teaching job? Oh, at Pamunkey High School, Pum 1965. Really? The, the, wow. The, 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 the High infamous Pamunkey High School. Where my husband graduated in 58. And so I got to teach there at the, uh, what, what we call the new school. Yeah. The new school then. And so I got to teach there with my principal was Mr. Charles Coates, and my vice principal was Sarah Kane, who, who wrote like a stamp. Her signature was like a stamp. Like a stamp. But they taught us a lot, too. A wow. lot. Mm -hmm. What, when you... If you could narrow it down, what do you think your approach to teaching was? If you had to, if you had to frame it. Mm. Well, I, I, I came in as a teacher, no foolishness. I was taught by Mrs. Kane. She did teach me. She said, you have to have discipline. Mm -hmm. And she told me you had to get it in the first two weeks of class. First two weeks. First two weeks. And I remember that so well because she was a staunch I mean, she was, whatever she did, she did it the same. Like I said, her penmanship was like a stamp. Mm -hmm. Sarah T. Kane, I remember that. But she told me, she said, don't smile until Christmas. <laughs> don't don't <laughs> smile until Christmas. Christmas. Because I was on the second floor okay. uh, for Monkey High School. Uh -huh. But anyway, and, and I believed her. Discipline was a key, and throughout my entire 30 years, that's what it was. But um, I had a heart for young people. Mm -hmm. And I remember one girl at one time uh, told me, Miss Smith, you're not strict. And I got angry. I said, what do you mean? But that was late on yeah. when I got to middle school. And, uh, but I always believed in being strict, but I wanted my children to learn. Yes. And education was the most important part. Absolutely. Because I knew I had done, and I was the first to graduate from college in my family and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting mm -hmm. because your approach to um, your approach to education led to a number of things. And, and the awards based on your teaching mm. are vast. But I want to read a few because, oh, because I know in you these situations, I'm, I'm going to. I, I got the cards, I'm going to read them. So we have the Agnes Myers Outstanding Teacher Award that was presented by the Washington Post. Mm -hmm. we've, we've got Charles County Teacher of the Year Awards. Mm. Um, we've got uh, various positions on executive boards for the uh, association, um, the Education Association of Charles County. Mm. Um, we've got the Verizon Community Innovator Award mm. for Leadership in Education. Mm. And then after retirement, you didn't stop. <laughs> you didn't stop giving back to education. Um, you were appointed by the Gover governor of Maryland for two consecutive five-year terms uh, to the College of Southern Maryland's Board of Trustees. Yes, I was. Where in that position, yeah. based on being better than the best, in 2017, you were the recipient of the Trustee Leadership Award for the Northeast Region by the Association of Community College Trustees, which is a national level body of 1,200 community colleges and junior colleges mm -hmm. with over 6,000 trustees. Mm -hmm. So I have to ask, what really drives the love and the heart for educating young people or people? But I have to say something here first. You don't achieve this by yourself. Absolutely. There have to be people in your, what, around you. And some people don't believe this. I never wanted to do any of those things. But there were people pushing me mm -hmm. to do it. 
And just like um, the, the uh, well, Agnes Maya, that was, that was really a surprise. But the, the, the thing that really got me the most was that the fact that 100% of the individuals in, in my school, John Hanson Middle School, nominated me for that award. Wow. And that meant your cafeteria workers, your, we call them custodians. Absolutely. Then. But it, the secretaries of that, everybody did that. And when one of my teachers across from me told me that, because when they came to tell me that I had won the award, I walked out of the office. I said, you got to be kidding. Yeah. I, I did that. And, and the, the CSM, I didn't want this. I didn't want to be a part of CSM. Mm -hmm. uh, but Senator Mac Milton did that to me. Yeah. And then we had the president, Dr. Garfield. So I, I, I don't, I guess um, when I retired from teaching after 30 years in Charles County, I, I was going to be retired. And I remember somebody saying, for me and another lady to run for the school board. Mm -hmm. I said, you gotta be kidding. And then I remember, and I have to say this, I remember that when my mother passed away in 2006, uh, she passed away on the fundraiser that Senator Mac Milton was having. And a few months later, I, I met him on the road, and he said, you don't have to go to Anne Arundel County anymore to caregive for your mom. And he said, I want you to do this. Well, in Malcolm, where I live, Senator Mac Milton, when he was a commissioner, had done a lot for us. Yeah. So I said, I owe you, and I didn't know what in the world I was getting into over here. But let me tell you, the College of Southern Maryland, the 11 years that I spent here were some of the best years. And I could see that we were doing things for young people because they were coming from the Charles County Public Schools and everywhere oh. else. And I got an insight into what we could do. In the community college, I never knew too much about the community college, which is a shame right. because it was right here. And uh, I just found that, that I could uh, continue to do something for the children. Wow. And uh, as a teacher for 30 years, I have to say this, they gave me uh, many of the students who they thought would not be able to accomplish a lot. And here's such a lady who was never the A, totally A student. I just average, average person. So, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat what uh, one of the assistants to Dr. Garfield said to me one day. She said, you're always saying you're nobody. And I, I would do that. Mm -hmm. She said, well, if you're a nobody and you have done what you've done, think of what somebody can do. So, 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 so these, are the, these are the people that were around me Absolutely. Uh, causing me to do things. But I, I, I love young people. Yeah. I still do. We can say. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take a quick break. Okay. Um, and when we come back, we are going to talk about um, the other side of these things, right? Okay. So we'll be right back. We're the NAACP. We don't follow movements, we define movements. just finished discussing uh, Mrs. Smith and her approach to education, love of education, how she got into it. Um, and while that is, that's pretty awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. Towards the end, um, understanding what it took to win some of your awards, especially the one where, like you said, 100% of the, yeah. the faculty Perfect. at John Hansen voted for you uh, to, to push you forward for the award for the award speaks a testament to your approach to education uh, I find it equally interesting the the uh, tutelage of no smile before Christmas that's true yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and get serious locking your discipline <laughs> in the first two weeks right? Yeah, right which is an approach that you can take to a lot of things yes you can. Um, but it also lets as we can tell lets your students know that you care about them, mm -hmm. and for you, that you were focused on um, pouring into them right. what was pouring in, poured, poured into, into you, them. which right. was um, 
education. Mm -hmm. But then we have your community service, mm -hmm. which I find also equally as interesting because as your education um, background was mm -hmm. expansive, uh, I heard you say you started at Poe Monkey High School. That's right. Um, you, you taught at middle school. Did you ever teach at elementary school? No, no. Okay. I started at Poe Monkey High School in six, 1965. Mm -hmm. And then when mandatory integration occurred down here in 1968, they, I was sent to Old Lackey okay. High School that the, the next year turned into General Smallwood. Oh, middle okay. school. I did not know that was oh, Lackey originally. Oh, oh, yeah, that was wow. Old Lackey, but well, they had to build a new Lackey. And... Uh, so that was General Smallwood. And then I was traveling, because at the time we were living in Brandywine. Mm -hmm. So I was traveling down what we call 210, Billingsley yep. Road 210, mm -hmm. and it, because it wasn't populated at that time. And I eventually said, I don't want to travel this far anymore. Yeah. So I, uh, and then we put land over in a little place called Malcolm, <laughs> and right behind Malcolm Elementary School. Mm -hmm. And we built a home there in 1970. And so I said, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. So I want to come home. So I went to Mr. Jesse's. No, was it Jesse Starkey? Yeah, Jesse Starkey. And uh, no, I went to Lavana first. He was school personnel, Mr. Lavana. And he said he wouldn't let me transfer. And so I went to Mr. Starkey. That was my first time of, of a teacher going to a superintendent. Yeah. And I went to him and asked him, could I please go home? And he said, yes, I could. And I got a job at... Uh, uh, what, what I get a job at? Uh, but I taught at Malcolm because mm -hmm. uh, I had substituted that a long time ago. And I taught at Malcolm. And then when they built John Hanson Middle School, and then I went there. Yeah, and okay. I spent the last 23 years. 23 at, years yeah, at, at John at, Hanson. At the middle school level. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Right. And what, what subject did you? Language, arts, and reading. Sixth grade at first. And then John Hanson was crowded when it first opened. And they sent the sixth grade teachers uh, uh, over to. Um, old Waldorf School, believe it or not. Oh, okay. Yeah, I yeah. taught at the Waldorf School for three years. Wow. And it was lovely. No principal. Uh, we only had a guidance counselor, and we had the vice principal would come over, and we had a secretary. Wow. And we taught in, uh, in that school for yeah, three years. And, and a lot of people thought it was bad for us, but just think about it. We taught three-hour shifts, and then we could go out to lunch because we didn't have a cafeteria. <laughs> and then we right. taught three-hour shifts. But we stayed over there, but yeah, I, I stayed at John Hanson until I retired. Wow. 1995. And of course, language arts and reading. That's correct. And, and a little bit of everything else. A little too. bit of everything yeah. else. Yeah. <clears throat> so then you retire. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about what you were doing with College of Southern Maryland. Right. Um, but then your community service mm -hmm. ramped up. Um, mm -hmm. and, and again, just to name a few. So we've oh, got the here we go Charles. Again. We, <laughs> you are chock full of lists. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the Charles County NAACP. Yep. We've got uh, that you were a county appointee to the Board of Appeals. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the Charles County Retired School Personnel Association. Mm -hmm. Charles County Sheriff's Citizen Advisory Committee. Mm -hmm. The Antique Arts Association. Mm -hmm. And the Kiwanis Club of Waldorf. Yes. Um, for which, if I'm not mistaken, you are one of the found, you are the foundation. Um, oh no, I'm still a Kiwanian. Okay. My husband is too, but uh, now I'm on the. Uh, what am I? Oh, I'm on the board of the uh, club, and then I'm on the foundation board. Correct. So of all of these, there's still one little thing that you are still educating with, and that is mm -hmm. your role with the African American Heritage Society. Yeah. And, I, and you know what I like to say? I like to say the African American Heritage Society of Charles County, Inc. Inc. Because okay. we're nonprofit. You non -profit. are. Yeah. And a little lady got me involved in that name, Miss Louise Booth Webb. Miss Louise Booth yes, Webb. Yes, she did. Uh -huh. she, she came to my classroom in 1994 for Black History Month, and that's when I really met her. Uh -huh. And uh, she was such a hit with my eighth graders. I was an eighth, eighth grade teacher at the time. They wanted to go to her home on Old Washington Road for a field trip. Right. And then when she got ready to leave, I thought, well, I, th I was busy because I was just say no and more sponsor, and I, I was doing a mentoring program after school. Nice. And she said, you think you're busy? Hook up with me. And I said, who does she think she is? <laughs> right. and, so, and I hooked up with that woman <laughs> <laughs> right. when I retired in 1995. Mm -hmm. 
And let me tell you, we. It looks like uh, you're working harder then than oh, you were the yes, first time yes, around. Yes, <laughs> because Mr. Uh, William A. Diggs, the founder of the Afro American Heritage Society, had died on February the 12th, I'll never forget, 1995, Lincoln's birthday. And uh, I retired in June of 1995. And I said, I'll just try to hook up with this lady. Mm -hmm. And she kept the society going uh, for three years. She really did by herself. Uh, and then in 1998, I think I officially really joined the society. And uh, she said, she appointed three of us as the officers. And it was Colonel Mary Arbord, who I'll never forget, who died a couple of years ago. And she was the diversity officer at CSM. See how all these things wow. happen that you don't have anything to do with? And she was the first diversity officer at CSM. And she made me secretary. And she made a young lady named Thelma Florence, who was a Charles County native, treasurer. And we stayed that way. In 1999, uh, <laughs> we were approached about a home, a house mm -hmm. on La Plata. And the society already owned five acres of land on 301. And this uh, man named Mr. John Dockery, he's, he's, uh, he's transitioned. But uh, he came to Mrs. Webb and the rest of them and said, you all should buy this house. It's next door to your five acres. So, you know, we were just sitting back there going, hmm. Had no idea what we were in for. And they said, yeah, we want this house. It was sitting on 2.76 acres of land next door to five acres. And to make a long story short, we got over to the office in the Plata, the lawyer's office, and uh, the treasurer and I said, no, we're not going to sign. Yeah. And Mary Boyd, Colonel Boyd, was a tall lady from Anderson, South Carolina, and she bent over top of us and said, girls, sign. <laughs> and we signed. <laughs> and uh, we had a 20-year mortgage on that place down in the Plata, and we often worried about it. But on December the, what, uh, 17, 2015, we paid. Wow. So, uh, and, a, and a lady who's, uh, who has, has uh, passed on named Vivian Brown named that house Heritage House. And so now we have Heritage House on mm -hmm. 7.76 acres of land, and it's totally paid for. Totally paid for. Yep. You, you mentioned um, that it was originally called Afro-American? Yeah, Afro, when we, when 1974, Mr. William A. Diggs founded it, along with, uh, we were told, Veronica Coates, and it was called the Afro. Well, in 1995, Mrs. Webb, uh, with, her, with her sharp mind, decided that it should be incorporated. I think it had been incorporated before, but they lost incorporation, and incorporated, so she went to a lawyer mm -hmm. in 1995, and she uh, yeah, incorporated before I got on board, incorporated that, that place there. So it wow. became, and she named it, they named it African. Mm -hmm. American. You know how we changed names. Absolutely. Yeah, and it, it became that before we. So that's interesting because um, when I first moved down mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. Charles County, mm -hmm. we moved um, in this area and my daughters um, started elementary school okay. at William A. Dix. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and it was, I didn't, I, I knew, I knew that he was uh, a, a black man mm -hmm. and I knew that he was an educator yes, was. in mm -hmm. the county. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know about the, the origin of the, of the society. Of the society. Yeah, yeah, because I, cause I met him during my 15th, 15th year teaching at Sonomi Howard's home at a barbecue. And, and he sat down beside me. Wow. And once he found out I was a teacher, he started talking and he said, uh, he found out I was from Anne Arundel County. Mm -hmm. And he said, I taught there. And he said, I taught at a place called Mill Swamp. I said, yes, sir, you, there's a place called Mill Swamp. And he talked for about two hours. Yeah. And I said, I'll never see that little man again. <laughs> and there you have it. Wow. I, I, that, that's the truth. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, William A. Diggs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Dorothea Smith. Uh, Miss Louise. Yes. Booth Webb mm -hmm. are all at a barbecue. At no, she, she wasn't there. Okay. No, no, she, she wasn't was, there. She wasn't there. Both of you are at a barbecue. I at met him before I met her. Salome Howard's house. Mm -hmm. Who? Was the president of NAACP. Absolutely. That's right. You're then on the 
you're then joined, you are dubbed the secretary of the African American Heritage Society. That's right, that's correct. With right. the original diversity officer for Colleges of Southern Maryland. Maryland. had no idea that, you know, what would happen later on. Yeah, right, Mary Board. I had met Colonel Board years before at, I went to her home because uh, uh, Edith Patterson had something there. Because Edith Patterson, Edith taught with us at John Hanson. Absolutely. And I had no idea, you know, just a tall, yeah. tall lady. And whatnot, and but yet, but look at how it came out. And Mary, and, and I really miss her today. Today, she was a great person. So let me let me ask you the a little more about the African American Heritage Society mm -hmm. Inc. Right? There's right that Inc. Inc. Um, what is what is their role? What 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 do you see? Because as of right now, you are the president. Of yes, I was. I, they called it being promoted. You, know? <laughs> you were promoted to, <laughs> to the president. Yes. What uh, What would you like their role to be in the county? Well, just I, the, I would like the role to be just what we're doing now. I mean, we call ourselves. It, it's difficult to get away from the word museum because they used to say museum. We are not a museum. We are not. We are really educational slash culture center, and we provide. Uh, we are a tourist attraction mm -hmm. because we have people coming to the house and we have uh, all, all, pe all kind of groups, civic groups, organizations. We have, we do uh, ch uh, young people, the, the Charles County Public Schools, we have uh, partnerships with them. And then we do outside because right now I have uh, some people from, from school groups from D Washington, D.C., a special population wow. who are going to be coming. So we're an educational culture center trying to promote the heritage and all heritage. Absolutely. Not just African American heritage and whatnot, and and we are tourist attraction, and also we are community resource, because some individuals do not understand that we have people who call us. Uh, we just got through uh, dealing with a young man from Portland, Maine, who is writing a book on the North Pole. Oh wow! To okay. be published by Random House, and he's going to put Matthew Henson in his book. So he came mm -hmm. down to see where Matthew Henson, the county where he lived, and things of that nature, and also. I'm going to give a plug. We're trying to get this county to, to do more by Matthew Henson. Absolutely. We're working on it now. Absolutely. Because Matthew Henson is a native son, and other things are being talked about, but not Matthew Henson. I and completely I'm, agree with that. And also trying to get the, we're trying to get the his African American history down here recorded. Uh, because it's not, it has not been, and I don't blame anybody except everybody who lives here. <laughs> uh, okay, so, right. so, so there's not one segment of population to blame, to you blame. blame everybody. So that's what we're trying to do, but right now uh, what we're trying to do is get uh, youthful people involved. Mm -hmm. Because as you see, the gray hair and all, a lot of us are getting older. Absolutely. And what we have now is a legacy. So we, I'm trying, we're trying to groom the 50-year-olds, the 40-year-olds to come in and really take over. Yeah. And, you know, and we'll be behind the scenes. Because how many people have a place in Charles County that's paid for? Majority, minority owned. Yeah. Because, because now we, I think when I first joined, it was all African Americans who mm -hmm. belong. But now we have uh, a mix, mixed company, you know, right. and whatnot. So that's what we are trying to do. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, it takes a lot of time. It's called volunteerism. Nobody gets paid at the African American no, Heritage nobody, Club. Nobody, <laughs> nobody does. But, no, no. you know, when you... When you're around a bunch of lifelong educators who mm -hmm. are who are determined to yes. educate in, in, in all ways, shape, or form, right? It's a it's a natural progression. And when you and I have to say this, and when you have mentors like Ms. Webb and, and and other people, you have to make sure that you sit down and you listen to them and you follow their their role. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and, what and I want to say one other thing too: the the Charles County branch of the NAACP is the only group who belongs to the Heritage Society. And, really? Yeah, and it started with Janice Wilson, your past president, and mm -hmm. it's continued with Dow the Sweat. Absolutely. So we appreciate your being a part of us. Well, well, we also appreciate you all. <laughs> um, you, you all uh, made a wonderful contribution to our youth council. Uh, yeah. To the to the young folks who oh, went to yeah. Detroit yes. for the national competition mm -hmm. um, last month, mm -hmm. and uh, and we appreciate that the young people appreciate it. The experience they had there mm -hmm. was uh, was incredible. Well, that's and, good. Um, that's good. And and a portion of that is dedicated is 
is owed to to the historical well, society. Yeah. Inc. Well, we have to keep to keep doing that. Absolutely, because that's where the legacy is all about for you. I'm glad. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. So as we as we bring this to a close, I um, I'm incredibly appreciative of this this time we spent. No, I enjoyed um, it too. The information <laughs> that you shared and what I learned uh, about you, um, not only from my research and preparation mm -hmm. for it, but, but for what you we, we spoke about today. Mm -hmm. um, I, I thank you for your willingness to be a part of it. I thank for thank Mike for uh, for pulling you in. We'll look off camera because he's our yes, he's that, our camera that's guy. That's what I just did. Uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> I thank him for for putting the. Uh, the bug in my ear to talk to you and to pull on you well, thank to come you. out. And I look forward to working with you at NAACP. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, I do. Um, so, again, I want to thank you, the viewers, for spending a few moments with us. Uh, this was um, a, a great time spent. I want to thank Mike, Amber, and Justin for their work behind the cameras. Um, and, again, a very special thank you, thank you to you, the viewer, for watching. Um, as I do at the end of every episode, please don't forget that the Charles County NAACP holds its general body meetings on the third Tuesday of every month from 7 to 9 p.m. at the CSM building on Old Washington Road. Um, you can keep up with the meetings, the events, general information by visiting our Facebook page, uh, Charles County MD, NAACP Branch 077016, or on our website at www.charlescountynaacp.org. Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share any of these episodes on our YouTube channel and or our Facebook page. And thank you again. Um, I am Joe Sampson, and I'll see you next time on the African American Voices of Charles County. Thank you.